flip it around because Lodier was um, black in this game. At Linares in 1994, this was played March 14th, 1994. Pawn to e4, pawn to e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4, Gioco Piano with bishop to c5, pawn to c3, knight to f6, and now d3 is Gioco Pianissimo. D, D6, Bishop B3, H6, H3, A6, Knight B to D2. There's a reason it's called Gioco Pianissimo. It is a very quiet game. Bishop to E6, Bishop to C2, Bishop to A7, Queen to E2, Queen to E7, Pawn to B4. These are all just book moves here. D5, A4, B5. And now castles, castles. So, okay, even game, quiet game, quiet opening, very quiet opening. How did Black win this game? A takes B5. A takes B5. D4. E takes D4. This move edged the evaluation bar in black's favor. Pawn to e5, not liked by the evaluation bar. I'm guessing that capturing, recapturing the pawn is better. And because uh, I guess black can play at Svishensuk. All right, he's gained a pawn. This threatens the knight. However, you can threaten his knight with a capture, gaining the second pawn. And that is exactly what he played. It's probably why the evaluation bar favored black. And now after knight... A bishop capture, a pawn captures knight and queen takes. Where's the knight going to go? I guess he has to go to b3. Okay, that doesn't win the material back that I thought, so... How does he win his material back, or is the point he can capture here? Oops. Is the point that he's got this advanced pawn? And then this next one's coming behind it, perhaps. Let's find out. Yeah, knight takes b4. So, I mean, the queen might like to take b5, but that would leave the bishop unprotected. So bishop to b1 is played. Now this can be secured here. Oops. Well, 
Or you can open an attack on that. And these pawns are becoming very powerful. What, 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 what? Rook takes bishop is played. Rook takes bishop. That's interesting. Sacrificing a rook for a bishop. Oh, I didn't take the rook back. He played pawn to c2. And let's see what the evaluation bar says to rook takes rook. Oh. Oh, no. For a second it didn't like it, but then it said it's okay. Pawn to c2. Rook takes rook. And get a second queen. Ho, <laughs> ho. This is interesting. Rook takes rook, king takes rook. Well, the evaluation bar is, hey, Twisted Seed, you're, you're here right toward the end. You're here just in time to see the Joel Lottier versus Gary Kasparov game. And I'm getting ready to close out the stream at the end of the countdown timer that you see there. Today is... Joel Lottier's 46th birthday, so we are looking. It's also Mama Jirov's birthday today, by the way. Who could have well been my today's grandmaster? Mama Jirov, born in 85, so 45 or 40. Wait a minute. Lottier was born in 73. Oh, 30. 34 today, 34th today for Mama Jiroff. So Queen takes B5 was not liked at all by the evaluation bar. Queen takes B3. What should White have played instead here? Because it's okay. White, black has a bit of an edge in this situation, but I mean, what does he play? Does he play the knight here? Nope. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I might have to look at the computer evaluation to see what black is supposed or white is supposed to play here. But I don't have time because like I said I have to go teach the bishop where oh a discovered attack here, but that's not gonna stop the knight from capturing. Okay, where do we put the bishop? It's not going to, wherever he puts the bishop, nothing's going to stop queen takes b3. Bishop, where twisted seed? To attack queen. And attack knight. Oh, here? Nope. That doesn't work. Because attacking the knight doesn't work, because as soon as the queen takes b3, it's now defending the knight. Alright, so I'm not real clear on what move is keeping white in the game here. Let me go ahead and hit show lines. Bishop G5. Really? <coughs> I 
Bishop g5, what an interesting move that. I see. The point being is you have to decide to give up one of your two queens. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. That is interesting. So if you keep this queen and take the knight, you lose that queen. And if you... Take that one. Woof. You lose that queen. And now white's got a huge advantage. So you can't do either of those things. Instead, according to the computer, you connect your two queens. Interesting. Well, Gary didn't play that. He played queen takes b5. Did not find that move. What a move that would have been, huh? Boy, if Gary had played this move, that is quite a beautiful move. All right, let me turn, turn that back off. What a move that would have been. So queen takes b5, though, is considered a blunder, big blunder. Queen takes b3. Queen b8 check. Nah, it's not looking too good for black now. Check. He can almost resign. King back to f8. Knight to d4. <laughs> Knight d3. Queen e3. Queen c4. And Gary finally resigned there. Now let's go back to that turning point move. That would have been a beauty. Would have been, could have been, should have been wasn't. The move that Gary did not find is to put your bishop right here where it can be taken with a pawn. <laughs> and the idea is put both queens in danger at the same time, a simultaneous attack. You've got to deal with one or the other. Taking the knight Gives white an advantage. After bishop takes, don't even take it back. You just keep pressing. Taking the bishop gives white a huge advantage. After rook takes, Again, you're going to press on. Only thing the black should do here is not accept the sack to connect his queens. What a beauty! What a beauty!